Welcome back to Joe's Tunnel Boxing. A lot of people say to me, um, why don't you go, you know, to these shows and do interviews with boxers and why don't you, um, you know, go down that path, try and be a broadcaster. I've no interest in it, to be honest with you. And to be honest with you, I don't think I would last five minutes. And a good example of why um, we've seen it over the last 24 hours, because I watched an awful lot of uh, interviews with Frank Warren regarding the DAZN deal. And I was, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what he's got to say, but not one of the interviewers, and they're all these YouTube guys, you know, YouTube thing. Uh, not one of them asked him any sort of cutting questions. They were all walking on eggshells. They were all uh, talking to him with great sort of reverence. A few people were just flat out sycophantic, um, and I thought, I couldn't do that. I mean, presumably they do it for numbers. Presumably they do it because they don't want to be in Frank's bad books. Uh, and we all know that Frank, whenever anyone asks him any kind of, anything that's even approaching an awkward question, immediately he gets very defensive, um, accuses them of, you know, negativity or pessimism or bias or whatever. And I couldn't put up with that. I'd say, look, I'm asking you questions, you silly old sod, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be a journalist. And that's the point. If you're getting access to people under the guise of being a journalist, you're not there to be mates with them. You're there to ask the questions that they don't want to be asked. You know, it's just, I shouldn't even need to say this. You know, can you imagine like Hugh McElvenny or Harry Mullen or someone like that? You know, someone, one of these truly great boxing writers people who are serious journalists. Can you imagine them doing that with a camera in the modern age? And, oh, Frank, oh, isn't it wonderful that you've signed a, a deal with the zone? Of course, this means, you know, lots of great matchups. And blah, 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 blah. Um, now, I hope that all that positivity is true. But if you're a journalist, you're supposed to say, well, what about this? What about that? You know, have you thought about that, Frank? People are saying this because people have questions. And it's up to a journalist to put those questions, awkward questions very often to the person that's being interviewed. <clears throat> now, far be it from me to make a habit of agreeing with Simon Jordan, because I, to be honest with you, I don't think he really knows what he's looking at when he watches a boxing match. And he himself has been um, extremely guilty in the past of being biased towards certain fighters and promoters. Eddie Hearn rather amusingly recently said, because him and Jordan don't get on, never have done, he says, Simon Jordan, sort of, I think he looks at me and thinks what might have been. I mean, <laughs> and I've said this to people in the past, you know, that Simon Jordan, I think is, he, you know, Eddie Hearn is kind of the guy that Simon Jordan wants to be, you know, the, the sort of charismatic, um, highly successful businessman, you know. I mean, regardless of, of whether, of the, the effects of Warren joining the zone on on matchroom standing with the zone. I mean, it, whatever you, you know, Eddie Hearn has, has made enormous strides into boxing you know, and, and achieved a tremendous amount um, and made money, not lost money, not lost millions. He's made millions. So Jordan probably does look at him and think there, but for the grace of God, go on, uh, annoyingly. But Simon Jordan does ask awkward questions when the mood takes him. And when he's not being biased, when he, because don't forget, he used to get on very, very well with Frank Warren when he was licking his ass and, and hating on Hearn because they both had a mutual enemy. You know, it's like Stalin and Churchill joining up, you know, <laughs> to sort of defeat Hitler. That's how they viewed it. But um, he was asking questions about the zone deal, and they were legitimate questions like, now that Eddie and Frank are under the same broadcaster, does this mean a diminishing of competition? Because competition in any sort of capitalist model is... is an absolute necessity. You need comp competition because it creates checks and balances. Um, all these very, what should be very obvious questions to anyone who understands the basics of, of business economics and business structures, they will ask these questions. And Jordan did this, and I watched him say it in a very sort of innocuous way, really, on TalkSport. Um, when, it, when it was mentioned to Frank, Frank sort of went into one. You know, I don't give a flying toss what Simon Jordan thinks. Frank, he's asking questions. You don't have to like the man. 
You know, these are questions that other people are asking, that your customers are asking. Okay, if you want, if you, because we all know that Frank Warren has an element of stinking hypocrisy about him. Don't forget, the zone was awful when it first started. Uh, it's nothing more than just a silly app, and streaming won't take off. Now it's what do you mean you're slagging off the zone? God, you're such a dinosaur. You know, you know, oh, it's all about the fans. The fans are this, the fans are that. Remember when him and him and Hearn were sworn enemies? They were oil and water. Um, Eddie Hearn's ripping everyone off. Matchroom are ripping everyone off. You know, um, all these pay-per-views, blah, blah, blah. You know, we care about the fans. Yeah, all right, Frank. Now sit the fuck down, okay? Because to be honest with you, you're talking shite. Um, now look at the situation. There's never been so many pay-per-views. All right. And yes, if you put two people under the same broadcasting banner, it does diminish competition. Of course it does, because their paymasters are the same person. It's like two people essentially working for, or at best with, the same company. You're not going to tread on, on, ultimately, your paymaster's toes, are you? So, no, I couldn't do any of this, you know, interviewing nonsense. I, I just, I get banned within a within a few hours of being at the first show, you know. I'd rather just go to the box and watch it and enjoy it, to be honest, and then do these little videos. But, um, but yeah, how annoying to agree with Simon Jordan. Annoying. Or at least in principle. But then he's probably got his own agenda he usually has. Um, and he usually talks crap anyway, so... Um, but, yeah, what do you think? What do you think about this subject? Um, real journalism seems to be diminishing and has been for some time with the advent of the internet, with all these people who want access to promoters. And I mean, I'll, I'll concentrate on boxing. You, this is a broader issue as well, but it seems to be diminishing. Um, and that's a, that's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. I mean, it is in politics as well and other things, but we'll concentrate on boxing. And I think it's awful. I think it's, it's a bad thing. And writing, writing is seems to be in decline as well. The ability to write, to be literate, you know, to write good prose, to, you know, there have been some great boxing writers in the past. I mentioned Hugh, Mac Hugh, McElver Hugh McElvenny, Harry Mullen, Joyce Carol Oates wrote about boxing in a very impressive way. Um, you know, you had Burt Sugar, I suppose, one of the famous ones. And, you know, there are some good ones out there. I mean, I still buy boxing news every week. I, think it's a, I still think it's a tremendous paper. I've bought that for over 40 years. I don't think I've missed an issue. But the writing in that is consistently good. Elliot Wurzel's very good. He's left Boxing News now. Um, but the quality of the writing is good. But um, And there are still good boxing books out there. There are st there's still some very good ones that have been released in the last 10 years. Um, but Generally speaking, I think the quality of writing has come down, um, and I do I do lay a lot of the the reason for that at the advent of the internet and the whole social media thing. And you know, if something if a piece of news is is twenty four hours old, it's it's almost defunct now. I mean, access to news is so swift, and there's so much of it. It's so there's a glut of it, and a lot of it is to do with these, you know camera laden YouTubers who run around shows grabbing sound bites rather than proper interviews just to get views. I think that's that's a shame. But anyway, you may have a different viewpoint. Leave it below, leave your comments below. And please uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Because we need the views. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Hit the like button, subscribe. You know that drill. Go on. Much love. Speak to you soon. Bye for now.